The next polymer is polyethylene. <coughs> polyethylene. Right. So polyethylene is the number one thermoplastic polymer which is in use at present days. Right. Second being polypropylene and third being polyvinyl chloride. So it is the most widely used thermoplastic polymer in the market. Right. So because of its variety of applications and so many different types of uh, polymers which are associated with this polyethylene. Right. So as the name implies for polyethylene, ethylene is the monomer. Right. So ethylene molecule, it is also called as ethene. So it undergo po addition polymerization, free radical addition polymerization in presence of Ziegler Netta catalyst. So thereby we are going to get polyethylene. Right. So if you are writing the structure of ethylene, it is CH2 double bond CH2. So if this undergo addition polymerization via free radical mechanism in presence of Ziegler Netta catalyst or benzoyl peroxide as an initiator, so N molecules of CH2 double bond CH2 it undergo polymerization. So that is addition polymerization. Right. So that we are going to get polymer that is called as polyethylene right so this is ethene or ethylene and this is polyethylene right so but this polyethylene is commercially available in two forms so polyethylene is commercially available in two forms or in two varieties namely the first variety is low density polyethylene the first dense the first variety is low density polyethylene so they are in short they are referred they are represent they are referred as ldpe right so low density polyethylene and they are going to exhibit a density of Right, they are going to exhibit a density of 0 0.915 to 0 0.945 gram per cm cube. Right, so that's why they are called as low density polyethylene. Right, so this low density polyethylene consisting of nearly 25 to 50 branches per thousand linear carbon atoms. Right, how many? It consisting of nearly 25 to 50 branches. 50 branches that's why they are called low density polyethylene so per thousand linear carbon atoms right per thousand linear carbon atoms they consisting of 25 to 50 branches right so these low density polyethylene can be prepared by using ethylene by addition polymerization of ethylene in presence of uh, you know a dibenzoyl peroxide as an initiator at a very high pressure and at a very high temperature of uh, around 250 degrees Celsius we are going to get a polymer that is called as low density polyethylene so now let us see the synthesis so if you can take CH CH double bond CH and CH so if you can take n times it will be polyethylene sorry ethylene or ethene right so it is undergoing addition polymerization right addition polymerization so under high pressure high pressure and at high temperature of 250 degrees celsius uh, right in presence of dibenzoyl peroxide that is c6h5coo twice o2 right dibenzoyl peroxide so we are going to get polyethylene right so that can be written like this C H H H C H H and C H H H. So n times. If you can write like this, it will become polyethylene, right? Polyethylene, especially as it is prepared under this condition it is called as low density polyethylene right so coming to the second variety of this polyethylene is high density 
हाई डेंसिटी पॉली इथिलीन हाई डेंसिटी पॉली इथिलीन सो इफ यू लुक एट द हाई डेंसिटी पॉली इथिलीन इन शॉर्ट इट इज कॉल्ड एज एच डी पीई इन शॉर्ट इट इज कॉल्ड एज एच डी पीई बिकॉज इट इज गोइंग टू एग्जिबिट अ डेंसिटी इन द रेंज फ्रॉम 0.9452 to 0.956 gram per cm cube right gram per cm cube that's why they are called as high density polyethylene and if you want to prepare this so once again so this ethylene molecule undergo undergo free radical addition polymerization in presence of uh, you know ziegler netta catalyst in presence of in presence of ziegler netta catalyst at 226 atmospheric pressure and at a temperature of 50 to 60 degree celsius so and in presence of a solvent such as hexane we are going to get high density polyethylene under this condition so if i write those conditions on the arrow mark it is also addition polymerization in presence of ziegler netta catalyst right so this is the difference the ziegler netta catalyst right at 2 to 5 atmosphere pressure and at 60 to 70 degree celsius or 50 to 60 degree celsius in presence of hexane as a solvent right so it undergo addition polymerization thereby it is going to form the polyethylene at a high density polyethylene ch ch and c h and h and c H, H, and H, right? This is n times. So this is called as so low density, low density polyethylene, and this is high density polyethylene. So in this way, one can prepare different varieties of polyethylene, right? And then if you can come to know the properties, right? so properties of this polyethylene so they are going to exhibit a variety of properties which are suitable for almost all the applications right see come to the property the first property is both ldpe and hdpe they are both are thermoplastic so we already know that what are thermoplastics thermoplastic polymers are the one which soften on heating and stiffen on cooling the repeatedly you can uh, uh, after heating it will become soft and you can if you want you can convert it to any desired shape and and that can be retained by cooling so that can be done for several times and that will be the first property of this polyethylene right both L L ldpe as well as hdpe are thermoplastic polymers they soften on heating stiffen on cooling repeatedly right so coming to the second property ldpe is a waxy solid it is a waxy sorry it is a waxy liquid which floats on water and softens at 115 degree celsius right they are thermo plastic polymers both ldpe as well as hdpe they are thermo plastic polymers right so coming to the third property so especially these you know polyethylene polymers are going to show excellent chemical resistance right and high toughness and then high very high impact strength and they are highly ductile right highly ductile a very high impact strength high toughness and they exhibit high chemical resistance right and the fourth property is they can be so they can be uh, they are known to be very good insulator of electricity right they are very good insulator of electricity and at last and at last if you are going to see the property about hdpe that is high density polyethylene so it is having very high tensile strength and it is exhibiting greater hardness than ldpe and it will become soft soften at 125 degree celsius right compared to ldpe right it softens at 125 degree celsius right this is the major difference between ldp and hdp right so these are all the properties of these are all the properties of 
this polyethylene polymer right polyethylene polymer right so coming to the applications applications actually we can list out n number of applications because polyethylenes are found everywhere right so whatever wherever you go you will find these polyethylene articles so here i am trying to list out some of the uh, uh, places where this polyethylene can be used right so let me start with ldpe so low density polyethylene is used in making variety of plastic equipment such as buckets jugs toothbrush brush tumbler right containers baskets plates cups right and uh, films for packaging <coughs> garments perishable foods and other uh, safety uh, packagings and on all those places these can be used right and coming to the second applications and this will be based on hdpe high density polyethylene can be used in making pipes right and then it is used in making bottles cans crates drums and other household applications right because they are very hard compared to ldpe that's why they can be used for this type of synthesis and coming to polyethylene this polyethylene is is used on the conducting surface is the coating on the conducting surface so because they are going to exhibit good insulation property here i told they exhibit good insulation properties so that's why they can be used to coat used to coat on conductors and wires and cables for insulation purpose right for mainly for insulation purpose and at last coming to the fourth and very very important applications that uhm uh ultra high molecular weight polyethylene right uhm uh polyethylene that means ultra high molecular weight polyethylene can be used can be found applications in the medical field right so in the medical field this ultra high molecular weight polyethylene can be used for ligament reconstruction and then spinal implants and also in making bulletproof vest and armored joint right vehicular armored joint right and also in making vehicular armor joint right so these are all the very very important applications of this polyethylene right so it exhibit it it, it uh, you know it appears in two varieties right one is ldpe the other one is hdpe right so, so next let us study about the synthesis properties and industrial application of chloropolyvinyl chloride right so chloropolyvinyl chloride synthesis among properties and industrial application let me call it as industrial applications industrial applications of chloro poly vinyl chloride chloro poly vinyl chloride in short it can be represented as or designated as cpvc right so poly vinyl chloride so before going to understand or study cpvc first let us understand about poly vinyl chloride so poly vinyl chloride is the third most widely used polymer in the market after polyethylene and polypropylene right so that poly vinyl chloride is prepared by the addition polymerization of vinyl chloride using free radical mechanism right we are going to get polyvinyl chloride right so from this polyvinyl chloride one can prepare chlorinated polyvinyl chloride that chlorinated polyvinyl chloride is a pvc right so that has been chlorinated via free radical chlorination reaction right so depending on the method varying amount of chlorine is introduced into the uh, pvc resin right so the chlorine content differs from manufacturer to manufacturer right so the base right the base percentage can be or the base percentage for pvc can be as low as 56 percentage and as low as 74 percentage and for chlorine content 
in most of the commercial resins people are using around 63 to 69 percentage if the chlorine content if it goes to 70 percent or more than 70 percent then cpvc is going to become unstable under normal operating conditions or temperature so that's why maximum of 63 to 60 per 69 percentage chlorine content you can add right see as the chlorine content is increases in cpvc its glass transition temperature can also increase significantly glass transition temperature that means transition from rigid state to flexible state so that's why this chloro polyvinyl chloride is more flexible than polyvinyl chloride and it can withstand very high temperature right compared to polyvinyl chloride right so overall this chloro polyvinyl chloride is prepared by the chlorination of polyvinyl chloride polymer polyvinyl chloride right so before uh, the synthesis coming to the synthesis if you can uh, go to explain the synthesis we have to explain in two step step one includes the preparation of so step one consists the preparation of vinyl chloride so we already know that the monomer for polyvinyl chloride is vinyl chloride so that will be ch2 double bond chcl so like this we can write so if it undergo addition polymerization via free radical mechanism thereby it is going to form so if you are taking n times then we are going to it is going to form ch2 single bond chcl polymer like this right this is vinyl chloride and this is polyvinyl chloride it undergo addition polymerization in presence of parasites in presence of an initiator that is called as parasites and under high pressure right under high pressure right so we are going to get polyvinyl chloride like this right so the same we can write in the other form so like uh, c h h n times double bond c h and c l the same reaction same conditions it undergo addition polymerization so thereby we are going to get a polyvinyl chloride this can also be represent like this so I will consider this also because in the second step I have to do chlorination right so now this is polyvinyl chloride so in the step 2 now we are going to prepare chloro polyvinyl chloride from this by taking polyvinyl chloride resin by chlorinating the polyvinyl chloride in HCl medium right in HCl medium we are going to chlorinate this polyvinyl chloride so step 2 is chlorination of chlorination chlorination of so pvc in hcl medium chlorination of pvc in hcl medium right so if you subject polyvinyl chloride resin right to chlorination so you can take this structure here ch is ch and h and uh, ch cl right n times if subject this to chlorination via free radical chlorination reaction via free radical chlorination reaction so we are going to get chloro polyvinyl chloride so c here c will come this h will be replaced by chlorine and one more chlorine atom is added into the matrix and ch and cl n times so this is called as cpvc so in order to obtain the desired properties for this polyvinyl chloride we have to go for chlorination right so in this way one can prepare the chloro polyvinyl chloride right so chloro polyvinyl chloride as i said it is more flexible it is more flexible than than pvc 
and it can withstand very high temperature because if you increase the chlorine content its glassation temperature also can increase right significantly so it can withstand very high temperatures right so this is all about the synthesis of chloropolyvinyl chloride that is cpvc okay so coming to understand the properties so already have revealed some of the properties that see chloropolyvinyl chloride is having high glass transition temperature right high glass transition temperature it is having high tg right and second property of chloropolyvinyl chloride is it is having high high heat distor heat distortion right heat distortion temperature you know uh, uh, property right it is having high heat distortion temperature okay and it is highly ductile it is highly ductile right so it is uh, chemically stable it is resistant to chemicals resistant to corrosion resistant to water acid and alkali right so that we can uh, write it is more flexible as already told it is uh, it is strong and it can exhibit outstanding mechanical properties right mechanical properties and high dielectric constant and it can show it can show high flame and flame and smoke absorbing properties smoke absorbing absorbing properties high and very high flame and smoke absorbing properties and it is highly ductile so all these are the properties of cpvc right high glass transition temperature heat distortion temperature chemically resistant flexible more strong right resistant to corrosion highly ductile outstanding mechanical properties flame and smoke absorbing properties all these properties together made cpvc is the third most widely used polymer in our polymer industry right so with this now we can understand the applications so here only i will you know start uh, explaining the applications so if you come to applications right so pvc as an application sorry cpvc cpvc as an application material has been in use since 1950s it is not now it is has been used in since 1950s right so the most common cpvc product that is mostly used in the current days is schedule 80 cpvc pipes and plumbing schedule right schedule 80 schedule 80 cpvc cpvc pipes and plumbing pipes and plumbing see dear students if you are const if you are uh, you know you know going to construct a new house then definitely the plumber will suggest this cpvc pipes right so at that time you will come to know for you know plumbing for distribution of hot and cold water or portable water you will you know recommend this cpc pipe so that's why the major application is a schedule 80 cpc pipes and plumbing right so this cpc plumbing is mainly employed in domestic delivery of hot and cold uh, portable water so hot and cold water distribution in case in, in case of residential and industrial areas right so these cpc pipes or materials can be used for in commercial plumbing right in industries in factories or in chemical synthesis and transformation right in many places like in chemical processing and in you know wastewater uh, treatment plants right so just like that in mineral mining and uh, production in irrigation and uh, fertilizers right so in the manufacturing of drain waste pipes or vent pipes etc in all these places these cpvc pipes and materials have been used okay so cpvc as a material is not recommended for it is not recommended for uh, you know pressurized gases or air 
but it is accepted for pressurized liquids so that's why using cpvc material you can store some of the chemicals some commonly used chemicals like brines alcohols such as ethyl alcohol methyl alcohol butyl alcohol etc and uh, hydrogen peroxide disinfectants and some common uh, strong bases like NaOH, KOH or acids like HCl and h 2 4 So like that you can use this CPUC material for storing the chemicals also, right? So if it is, right? If and further, if the same CPVC, if it is fabricated under, you know, standard conditions of uh, federal regulations like, uh, uh, like including FDA and ASTM, this CPUC material is rated right okay rated and approved for food and consumables and for drinking water for drinking potable water applications right so that is also possible so overall it can be used for hot and cold water you know plumbing in uh, residential areas and industrial areas so hot and low you know that is uh, that will be there and hydronic piping and it can be used in automobiles for in case of radiants and fan coils and it can be used to transport art you know art and corrosive fluids and inorganic acids right so all these are the applications so almost in all the fields cpc find application right it is remember it is the more third most commonly used for thermoplastic polymer after polyethylene and polypropylene right so this is all about the uh, you know chloropolyvinyl chloride so if it is vinyl chloride this is polyvinyl chloride right so uh, i hope you understood the concept